have you been looking for a very tasty meal that costs under five pound and you can cook it in 15 minutes or less from a van? I think I may have the answer for you. This is one of our favorite meals to cook. It only uses two pans, so you haven't got tons and tons of dishes and it's pretty healthy and it is delicious. So I've got everything out ready to cook. I'm gonna be the chef today. Leo, you are going to be filming, aren't you? I feel like that's probably a more difficult job than actually being a chef. To be fair, this one's pretty simple and filming can be difficult sometimes, as we found out in the last cooking video, where part of actually all of the video was missing because I didn't realise it would fallen in front of me as I tried to get involved. That uh, might be the problem, actually. <laughs> so yeah, when you were getting frustrated with the noodles and I was there yeah. like, I'll help. And then the camera just went like, and basically just didn't see anything. So, we are not going to make that mistake today, are we, Lewis? No. Camera boy is on the go. First, let's appreciate the view we have whilst cooking before the sun goes down. This is Stonehenge. And we are making spicy chorizo tomato pasta. So we've got chorizo. I think we're going to use half of this because it's quite a big one. It's 200 grams. So we're going to use about half, maybe three quarters. Then we've got a knife, chopping board and a garlic press. Two cloves of garlic, some cheese, chilli flakes, parsley, tomatoes, any tomatoes, they're like a mix of plum and cherry, pasta, or you can use spaghetti, either one, we just don't like eating spaghetti in the van because it gets everywhere, a little bit of oil, and a vegetable stock cube. This is all you need. Good luck getting tomatoes though in this economic climate. They're like gold. Yeah, so basically I went to Lidl's to get tomatoes. Obviously you normally get like a pack of however much. I had to basically pick loose tomatoes. That's why they're a mix. Because apparently they're having trouble in Spain and Morocco getting tomatoes over here. But Lou has actually heard that that's a lie and it's Brexit, so. Don't quote me on that though. I'm just saying what other people are saying. I've got friends that live in Spain and there's loads of tomatoes there. Lou is spreading lies, let the games begin misinformation so first you just want to put as much pasta as you want i'd never measure this we just kind of chuck a load in look at it then see there's not much left in the bag and just kind of chuck that in too <laughs> then we just need some water so what i heard from tiktok this week from either gino or gordon ramsay i can't remember because they were doing duets together and confusing so apparently the pasta water is meant to be as salty as the sea so we'll put a little salt in. Gee whiz, man. <laughs> it's gonna be. <laughs> wow. It's got. <laughs> well. Then put it on. So whilst the pasta's boiling, I'm gonna chop all the stuff up and then we're gonna move on to frying stuff. So in case you're wondering, or you might not be wondering if you watched the cooking video from last time, we have lost our chef's knife, which sounds really dangerous, but I think it's just end up in storage. So right now we are using a steak knife to chop stuff and it's not great if I'm being honest, but it still, it works. If I'm filming, I'm having chorizo. Next. Not gonna lie, these tomatoes look amazing. So we got 85p for 19 tomatoes, so it's not too bad. I'm gonna use them all for this, so. But in today's market, I reckon we could resell them for about a fiver. <laughs> so we're just gonna add the treats of the pan. And we're gonna press the garlic in. This is a fun fact because Lewis didn't know and my mum didn't know that basically when you get these garlic presses, you don't have to take all the skin off and you just put them directly in like that. So the skin just gets caught in there and then obviously you just get rid of that. So whilst this is frying up a little bit, I'm going to leave it on a medium heat and then we are going to chop up all the little tomatoes. We're just going to cut them in half like this, just like that, but all 19. As you can see, some are like plum tomatoes and some are like cherry tomatoes. It doesn't really matter, any tomatoes will work. I think the variety is what makes it look so aesthetically pleasing. <laughs> yeah, it looks prettier if you've got different ones, different colours. So we're just going to add the tomatoes in now. Put them in. I've turned it down now to low and we're just kind of cooking them off a little bit and I'm going to leave the lid on and 
and just leave them alone. Don't forget to keep stirring the pasta as well because you don't want it to stick to the bottom. So if you don't want spice, then obviously skip this bit. But we add about half a teaspoon of chili flakes. Then we're just gonna add half a teaspoon of parsley. Just kind of roughly, like it doesn't have to be perfect. Give it another stir. Little director's note by you. I wish you guys could smell this because it smells incredible. So we're just gonna slice up the cheese. We haven't got a grater. I feel like when we were sorting the van, we wanted to kind of make the most of all the spaces and obviously I can just cut up cheese with a knife. This will just go on the top at the end. Kind of slice them like this, chop them up a bit. It's kind of nicer because you get thicker bits of cheese. So the other option is we've got a potato peeler so you could kind of peel it. I'll show you that now actually. So this is our other option. So we just kind of like do it like this. So next we're going to add the little vegetable stock cube, I crush it up in the thing but these ones tend to be quite sticky so it's going to come out in a lump anyways. So it's just there and basically what you want to do now is use some of the water from the pasta, so starchy water, it's about 100 mils. Be careful because obviously like it might get back and then you just kind of work with getting the vegetable stock cube around. I'm just going to turn it up a little bit now. The world's smallest pepper cracker. <laughs> We're just going to take the lid off for a bit because we kind of like the treat so crispy so I'm going to do that and turn it back up a little bit and just keep an eye on it to make sure it's not burning. So I'm just going to strain the pasta. And then we are just going to chuck it into this pan and give it a mix. Once you've stirred it all in, it's basically done and you can just add it to whatever dishes you're serving it in. Last but not least, the cheese. Just like pop it on whichever way you've done it, if it's grated, if it's not, whatever. Time to eat. So yeah, that's basically it. It's quite an easy one. And yeah, just gonna enjoy now. You can add like a bit more parsley to the top to look pretty, but this is how we leave it. And Lou has already started. This is one of his favorite dishes that I make, isn't it? Facts. <laughs> so yeah, I hope you enjoyed. If you did, give us a little like. And yeah, let us know if you decide to make this. Bye. Bye. <laughs>